episode of Pixel Narratives with Anutosh. Our guest here tonight is Pratik Parme, an alumni of Dispur College under the Guwahati University. He is currently working in the media and television industry as an actor and director. He has received several awards, the NSS University Award 2019-2020, the NSS State Award 2019-2020, youngest delegate from Assam to represent the youth at National Youth Parliament 2021. On 20th January 2020, he had the opportunity to perform at the Prime Minister's residence. He had been as a part of the NSS contingent in the March past in Rajpath on 26 January 2020. These are just among the few achievements that Pratik Parme has accomplished till today. There are many other things that he is going to share to us. At the very beginning, welcome Pratik to the studios of AFTA and my guest for Pixel Narratives with Anudhush. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the warm welcome. Hokoluke Namaskar. I am Pratik Parman. I am so glad to be here at Pixel Narratives. Thank you. Uh, I was just going through your uh, CV. It's such a wonderful and elaborating uh, events that you have taken part in. You have been the president of the TISS Mumbai Students Union. Now, what's that? Yes, so basically TISS is Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai 
And uh, when we talk about Tata Institute, it is known to be one of the most feminist organizations, one of the most feminist institutions where students' voices are heard. And therein we have student union elections. Okay. So in that student union election, I took par uh, part in the candidature of president. And oh, what happened wow. was, uh, in the first time in the history of Indian students' politics, I happened to be the first openly trans and queer person to become the president and win the position. Mm. Yeah. You have also cleared the UGC? Yes. Net. I uh, cleared UGC net uh, last year. Yeah. Were, you, were you thinking to take up academics in your life? Yes, definitely, sir. I believe that education has been my key to escaping reality and fulfilling my dreams to an extent. I come from a very tiny village where people do not know what dreams are. People somehow forget that, you know, the dream could exist out of the bubble. That's why education has helped me go through different ways in my own ways and finding my place in the world. And yes, I will also be applying for a PhD to some institution. Oh, wow. Uh, let us go back to your childhood. How was your days in the schools? Where did you study? Okay, so I am from Gugamuk and okay. in a very tiny village called Amulapati, which you will not find in Google Maps. There is no name. In fact, when we look at our voter, voter ID, there is certain Miri Gaon, okay. which, which means missing people's gown. Yeah. Okay. And on the other hand, it's Amulapati because there were Amla trees, so many oh. of them. So we choose with either of them. However, we call it Amlapati with love because that's what it has been known for. Uh -huh. There, uh, luckily, there was a Catholic mission school yeah, which brought English education and they were educating us at very minimal fees. So that seemed like the most viable option to go and I studied in Christ King High School. Uh, there from LKG to till class 10. And speaking about my life in school, uh, it was a wonderful, a marvelous time studying there. Mm -hmm. And it did pave the way for me to dream, to express myself, which, however. Which was your very favorite subject? Oh, my favorite subject would be subjects like English, because there is language in it. Okay. I love communicating with people. Okay. Subjects like drawing, art. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, what change has art made in your life? Art has significantly made a lot of changes in my life. When you don't have many resources around you, art is that one thing that lets you escape your reality. It helps you express yourself in a way where you might not be able to express in some other way. So art has let me express myself in ways that I've, I never thought anyone could. Art has let me explore myself. And that small exploration has taken you to the big screen. Yes, sir. You have. Be, you know, made your mark in the film and uh, your video film, uh, Love Over Hate, yeah. uh, The Journey to Peace and it has been into, uh, into the International Emmy Awards 2023. Yes. Please let us know about uh, what actually the film, uh, the content of the film and uh, how did you take it to that level that it has gone to the international competition. Uh, to begin with, I never imagined that it would end up in a platform as big as the International Television and Academy of Science and Arts. But however, uh, while I was making the film, my major priority was about making people hear my voice, the story that I have. And that story was about love and hate. How the roller dogs of hate could dominate Love, however, if we have enough love within us, then maybe peace could prevail. The content of the movie pans about the lives of people, how their identities uh, or factors associated with their identities, such as gender, caste, their origin, their tribe, their class, could affect them or could, you know, put them in a position in the society where they could face some sort of discrimination, some sort of pain. And that was the prior focus of it. And uh, do you think that society has undergone some change in discriminating people? Yeah, the society is very interesting. It keeps on changing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, where in one point I have been criticized for dressing up in certain ways and I have been really uh, borderline <laughs> bullied and yelled at mm -hmm. for the same thing. Certain parts of the society have really accepted and also praised that. Okay. Same thing about okay. me. And in fact, the change has been seen in some people, wherein some people who were not accepting about certain factors back then are starting to understand it now. Okay. Uh, 
It has been really wonderful talking to Pratik Parme. We'll take a short break and join you again. Be with us on Pixel Narratives with Anutosh. Welcome back to Pixel Narratives with Anutosh. We are in conversation with Pratik Parme. We have already come to know about little bit about his the art activities that ignited the passion and he moved to the big screen, became an actor, director and his film has been submitted in the competition for International Emmy Awards 2023. Apart from that, Pratik has been involved with lots of social activities right from blood donation camps, uh, contributing for the betterment of a lot of activities for the patients. Let us talk about these works that Pratik has been into. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for bringing that up. I believe that uh, even if we follow education or art, if we do not serve the society, then it is incomplete. I feel like it is a responsibility of every human being to give something to the society, to give something to nature, to give something to the people. And somehow inherently, I was a child who was very troubled. I was bullied at school. I was not loved for a long time. And I felt bad. My initial thought was, there will be a lot of other children out there who are not loved like me. A lot of other people who face similar or maybe different kind of things. And they're going through a lot of troubles. That is something I could not see, even being a single child locked at home. That's why when I started uh, moving out of my home at the age of 15, I moved out from my village into this big city, Guwahati, to follow my dreams. I saw that in the city, there were a lot more visible problems. And I could not bring myself to peace that, you know, I have to see those problems happening. So when uh, I, I got some education and some courage from the people around me, I started working at the age of 17. Unfortunately, uh, a very good friend of mine, one of my best friends, Mahashweta Bordelot, she passed away uh, because of blood cancer, leukemia. Oh. And it was a very late stage that she was actually diagnosed and there was no way out of it. And seeing her journey from being a very beautiful young girl filled with potential to someone who could not live her life anymore, it struck me very hard. So when I joined Dispur College, I was exposed to NSS, National Service Scheme. It's a scheme for youths out there to explore their talents and at the same time uh, build the capacity within themselves to serve the society where our motto is not me but you and when I heard that motto I felt so motivated and so connected to it not me but you maybe not me but you will surely be happy and, and, and that's how you got into cancer awareness and oncological all those activities yes uh, during my time in NSS uh, there was this professor of mine who was very lovely we often joke about how loud her volume is all the time she's very charismatic sometimes borderline you know aggressive but we love her for whoever she is Sunita Agarwala man she pushed us to an extent where we could explore our capacities we could explore our powers we could explore so many things within us that we didn't know and also the fact that we can be of some use to the society so when I joined them uh, we were connected to Sanjeevani Life Beyond Cancer mm -hmm. we work in uh, Biboro Cancer Institute it is in Rehabari and the work is still continuing where we serve people who are suffering from cancer, people who have been diagnosed with cancer and are going through the treatment. And uh, tell us about your Secret Santa project. <laughs> that, that, that word itself is so uh, interesting, Secret Santa. So I would be happy to know, I mean, I know my viewers would be really happy to know about what is this Secret Santa project? Secret Santa project was a big secret that came out in a very wild manner. Because when we talk about cancer, it is often seen as a very, you know, threatening, life-threatening disease. And people are often sad. They don't see much scope or any dreams per se. So during Secret Center project, in the month of December, we actually go out and ask the cancer patients what they want for this Christmas. Any gift they want. Maybe toys, maybe a pencil, maybe a drawing book, maybe colors. And these are the things that we actually collected through 
uh, our source of funding that is crowdfunding and many people including our professors at Dispur College including my friends including the relatives I've had they have contribute, uh, contributed bits of uh, pieces of the amount some people have brought certain things for the patients and in the uh, on the day of Christmas 25th December we distribute all of those gifts to every cancer patient that's out there uh, having treatment within the Guwahati premise and uh, you have also been involved with a lot of street plays and one of your interesting uh, photographs that I've come across is I am bunking my class for this and uh, really uh, please stop this bursting of crackers. So this shows that you are not only uh, you know working for the human being, you are also working for the animals. And uh, what's your expression, I mean, what was your uh, uh, work that you have done uh, to protect the life of the animals? Yeah, uh, sir, it's not just the animals, but nature as a whole. Flora, fauna, animals, human, we are all connected mm -hmm. and people don't realize it. And I am from a village where we are used to sitting under trees. We are used to seeing animals be free. And when you come to the city, you see that there, there are so many more problems. Uh, trees are being cut left, right and center in the name of development. And yes, we need to draw a middle line, but we could see that uh, certain big organizations and institutions were deforesting. Mm -hmm in the outskirts of the city. They were polluting to an extent where Guwahati has crossed its signature record temperatures this year. In fact, it's not about just this year. Every single year it has been increasing and we are sitting in the studio whereas back then by September it was a tolerable month. It was a lovely month. So that was a trigger point where I was like, no, just being educated in the school, discussing about environment within school premises and not doing anything for the environment is not justified. Do you know that, you know, in uh, US, uh, they don't cut trees in the name of development. They relocate yes. those trees to a different location where it survives. Yes. So their counting of trees remain the same. Yes. Here, we keep on cutting down the tree and making roads, making buildings, making a lot of other development in the name of development. And uh, climate action, you have been taking part of that also, climate change. Yes. Uh, so, would you please uh, share about <laughs> So, in 2018-19, Greta Thunberg, she yeah. became a big icon where a young child at the age of 12 is speaking about climate and how this is the only planet we have. And I was like, okay, if a 12-year-old child is doing, why can't I? Right. So, we took the initiative of doing this in Guwahati. We chose various hotspot locations, mm -hmm. Ganeshguri, Pan Bazaar, Fancy Bazaar, and we just held a placard in the you know, grilling heat that I'm bunking my class for this in the for the sake of environment. Please stop bursting crackers. Mm -hmm. This was something we did during Diwali. Many people know that pollution is a big problem, but we don't acknowledge it. So many people are just throwing chips packet away, just like that, without thinking what the impact is. So so many people are bursting crackers for celebrating, mm -hmm. for a good thing, happy thing. However, they don't realize the kind of effect it has on animals, on elderly people, on the nature around. And uh, I can see that on the 24th of January 2020, you had an opportunity to perform in the Prime Minister's residence. I would be very happy, you know, the, our viewers would be happy to know what actually happened and what was your inter interaction with uh, Honorable Prime Minister Nandra Modi ji. Uh, it was an honor. It was a big privilege that I got to be selected in a program like this. To be honest, there were, uh, I was the only SMEs person from oh, wow. NSS to represent and dance there uh, in the Prime Minister's residence that mm -hmm. year. And uh, the performance that I did was a mixture of yog, yoga. Okay. And also at the same time, the modern arts, representing how modernity and also our ancient art forms could take a very beautiful form. And the kind of interaction I had with, uh, uh, you know, Sri Narendra Modi is very <laughs> heartwarming actually. Because when I was performing, I could see that, oh, the Prime Minister of India is looking at me. <laughs> And it was a group performance, so many people were performing, but I felt so special because they kept looking at me, maybe because they saw some potential. And after the performance, we had a brief interaction with uh, Narendra Modi. And I remember him saying that, Aapka future bohat bright hoga. And I still carry that as a prideful tag. That, that, that's really <laughs> wonderful. And uh, you have been also a volunteer for the Swachh 
Abhijan Misra. Yeah. So that's also a, uh, something to share. And you work during the COVID time. You have done a lot of wonderful work uh, for the during that COVID period. So I would like our viewers to know about those. Yeah, so to the viewers watching this, if you are listening to me talk, I would request that don't just listen to this, go out there, plant a tree, you know, put a tub somewhere in there. So from uh, working for environment to, you know, stopping pollution, we had the idea that if other people are not doing it, we will take your kura out of your place. Okay. And this is something we did just for students from Dispur College. We went to Bakista Temple, we mm. picked out kura out of you know, it's a religious place and people do visit, but you know, the packets of dhoop, the packets that they carry, you know, prasad in, it's all thrown into the river and around. So from there, from uh, Nehru Stadium, from Horuhajai Stadium, from Sonapur, from all around the gutters of Guwahati, we have collected trash. And that was our statement where we said that maybe this poor college is not that well known for whatever you know it is in Guwahati, but we want to keep a standard. Our college does care about the pura you produce and we produce, so we clean that. Yeah, I, I have been uh, looking at the lot of activities that this poor college has been doing, and it's really wonderful to see that uh, there are such wonderful people, you know, as students, uh, but then they are doing so lot wonderful work and uh, my podcast is also to highlight those people who have really contributed uh, to the growth and development of the society, protection of child rights and education and uh, people like you have, uh, you know, uh, through your uh, rallies and walkathons, you have uh, tried to you know, highlight certain things that people have uh, almost forgotten and uh, you have uh, tried to, you know, create an awareness among people. That's really, really uh, wonderful and it's... Uh, uh, what are your plans? Okay, so before we move on to the plans, first of all, uh, sir, I would like to thank you for this initiative actually, Pixel Narratives with Anatosh, obviously. It's a wonderful program. I've seen all the episodes and if you have not seen them, please watch them. If you're watching this, watch more videos. <laughs> but I would like to just say that uh, when it comes to an uh, initiative like this, I would like to appreciate this part that you're highlighting stories that people don't really care about. Who cares about saving a tree nowadays? Almost no one. You're sharing stories that people have not heard before, so I really appreciate this. Thank and when it comes to what I'm looking forward to, yes, when I was in Guwahati, when I was a young kid, I have donated blood. I have gone out there doing dramas in the streets, making a fool out of myself. I have gone bunked classes for the you know cause of environment. But my larger goal now is to serve the society at a greater level. So I will be definitely pursuing my PhD in health policy or in the public policy domain wherein I can contribute in policy making mm -hmm. and help the public in a larger way. Okay. You also conduct a lot of adventure camps. Now, adventure camps is a different genre and the other awareness kind of things you are doing. But adventure camp itself is also an awareness yeah. and it is. Uh, it takes a lot of meticulous planning. How do you do that? Well, uh, it actually began, began thanks to NSS. Mm -hmm. Through NSS, we had our first adventure camp in Arunachal Pradesh, Diran. Okay. In National Institute of Mountaineering and Allied Sports. So from there, we have certificates as well. And when we tell people we have certificate from NIMAS, which we just got, we think it's nothing. And they're like, what? You have a certificate from Nimas, like the Nimas, where people go to train for, you know, hiking Mount Everest, like that Nimas. And we're like, yes. And we didn't realize that it could be such a big thing. But from that, uh, you know, we learned a lot of things like climbing a rock, climbing mountains, trekking mountains, going in terrains which are unexpected, uh, river crossing, and so many other techniques that have helped us. And this has also helped us, you know, rescue people from flood affected areas, rescue people from earthquake and, and landslide prone areas. And, it, and, and this is not restricted only to Assam. You are going to no. West Bengal and other nearby states yes, also. Yes, yes. We have been to West Bengal, Arunachal, Assam, right. etc. And the kind of adventure camps that, are, that have been inspired later on is very much associated with uh, nature and environment. Wherever we go with our adventure, we take your with us. <laughs> okay. And one more thing is that uh, 
you are doing a lot of wonderful things apart from that you are also participating in the bhu dance <laughs> now as an assamis of course everyone is expected to do a lot of bhu dancing but you are doing it in a very professional way how did you get interested also in dancing uh, well uh, when i say i am an artist i am completely in the performing arts realm yes. i believe that i have to be a jack of all trades if not a master of none <laughs> to at least execute something as an actor as a as an artist we need to know other forms of arts as well that's where dancing came in very early on where i could express myself through bodily motions where i could dance my heart away and that's how we actually ended up representing a lot of the times when i said that i performed in front of the prime minister this is one of the factors that has helped because i was dancing at the same time doing yoga and this is something that has been a part of my childhood and it only grew more as i progressed further and you were part of the national you know republic dep in a contingent oh yeah that yeah. is yeah That's i think my cv is very confusing for yes, people yes <laughs> it is dynamic i mean uh, it is not just dynamic he is also into dramatics he is also into social uh, welfare uh, activities what else at this age he has accomplished a lot of wonderful things and there is you have a long way to go so it it had been really a wonderful evening talking to pratik parme and uh, in the very short uh, time we could understand the lot of different shades in his lifetime till today from arts to social life to the political life to the theater dance cinema i think he has a long way to go with that we end today's uh, podcast pixel narratives with anutosh in our next episode we'll be talking to another person who will be sharing his life experiences till then goodbye